What's up guys, I'm Rustin from RossmoreTech.com and this is another tutorial in Swift programming. Now in this class I'm going to show you guys how to use the switch statement. So let's get started. Now what is a switch statement? Well a switch statement basically tests for multiple conditions and in each condition does its own thing. And I'll explain exactly how that works. But first we're going to start off by declaring a variable. We're going to type in VAR. VAR is a keyword. We're going to type in our variable name which is red and we want this to be equal to integer value of 5. right? So we declared a variable and uh, we call the variable red and has an integer value of 5. Now we're going to start our switch statement. To start our switch statement, we're going to type in the switch keyword, which is S-W-I-T-C-H. We're going to hit space. We're going we're to tell it what our variable we're testing or our value we're testing. We're testing for variable red. Or we can type in a value there. It doesn't make a difference. But I'm just going to type in the variable name. And then we're going to hit space, open and close curly brace. In between the open and close curly brace, we're going to click the cursor. I'm going to hit enter a few times. So this is the structure of a switch statement here. We type in our keyword switch, space, the value uh, we want to test. In this case, it's our variable red, which has an integer value of 5. Now, in between this open and close curly braces, all the different things we're going to test, all the different values. And uh, we separate each value, we separate the different values with a case. So we got to type in our first case. So we're going to type in C-A-S-E, case is a keyword, right? We're going to hit space, and we're going to type in a couple of values. So I'm going to say... 1, comma, we separate each values by comma, by the way. I'm going to type in 3, comma, uh, 5, comma, uh, 7, comma, 9, and that's the end of this case here. And after the end of each case, you got to have, or you got to put in this colon, right? So make sure after the end of each case, you got to add a colon. So now after uh, we add the colon, we got to give it a statement. And uh, basically what it's doing, if case, any of these values are present, all right, then it's going to do whatever's under this case statement. And we want it to print something out on the screen. So we're going to type in a P-R-I-N-T-L-N code and uh, the, add this open and close parentheses. So we want to print something to the user. So let me just clean this up a little bit here. So now we're going to type a message to the user. So we want to use a set of double quotes. So in between the set of double quotes, I'm going to type in the number is odd. So in case any of these values are present, right? If, if our value we're that we're testing, if any of these values are present, it's basically going to print out to the user the number is odd. So that's our first case. Now let's, uh, let's give it a second case. So again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to type in case. Case is our keyword. We're going to hit space. Now we've got to give it some more values to test. So now these are going to be even numbers I'm gonna, that I want to test. So we're going to type in 2, comma, 4, comma, 6, comma, 8. So 2, 4, 6, 8. Now these are the even numbers. And as you guys can see, I am uh, doing only single digit numbers. So numbers from 1 to 9. So um, if any of these numbers are present, then we want it to do something. So again, after the, the, the ending of the value of your case, you got to type in colon. Right? See how we typed in colon? And uh, we have to make sure we type in a statement. After each case, you have to have a statement. So I wanted to also print out something on the screen. So we're going to type in P-R-I-N-T-L-N keyword, open and close parentheses. In between the open and close parentheses, I'm going to add a set of double quotes. So two double quotes because we're going to print something out to the user. And we want to tell the user that the number is even, right? So in case any of these numbers are present, right? If red equals any of these numbers, it's going to print out the number is odd. If red equals any of these numbers, then it's going to print out the number is even. Now, you can add as many cases as you want, but I'm only going to show you two in this video. You guys can uh, practice on your own. But after you're finished with a case, you need a default. And I'll show you how that works. We're going to type in the keyword D. F-A-U-L-T, default, right? Default is a keyword. And you have to add a colon after that. So after the keyword default, add a colon. Basically, this is like the if. If you guys know how to use an if or else statement, this is like the else in the if else statement. In case any of these are not present, it does the default, like the else, basically. So we want it to do something. We have to give it a statement. So we're going to type in another print line statement. So we're going to type in P-R-I-N-T. LN, open and close parentheses. And we want to type in another message to the user. So I'm going to give it another set of double quotes here. In between the set of double quotes, I'm going to type in the number is 
uh, greater than two digits. So basically, if they enter a number greater than two digits, or if it's none of these are, are true, that means they entered a number greater than uh, two digits, or if they basically entered zero. In this case, as long, if they entered zero, then it's gonna print out the number is greater than two digits. So basically what this means, if you enter a number that's not included in here, so let's add zero to this, basically. Zero is, I guess, neither odd or even, right? So let's just add zero to the odd, right? So in case uh, any of these numbers are not present, this means that you the user entered a number greater than one digit. So in that case, it's gonna print out to the user the number is greater than two, and I have to change this to one. The number is greater than one digit. So let's hit play here and let's test it out. Build succeeded, and it printed out the number is odd. Because remember, we gave our uh, value of variable red a value of five, an integer value of five. Now let's make it uh, have a two-digit number here so to test out the default. Let's hit play here. Build succeeded, and as you can see here, it printed out the number is greater than one digit. So let's give it a uh, even number uh, that's less than uh, two digits, or at least one digit even number, and let's type in two. Because remember, two is in our uh, case with the even number. So let's hit play here. Build succeeded, and it printed out right down here the number is even. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Again, from the top, I just declared a variable, and I called my variable red. And I, and I made this variable equal to, I started off with, I guess, five. Or you can make it equal to, if, if you want a, any, you can make it equal to any type of data you want. It could be a string, character, integer, double. In this case, I wanted to show you guys with integers. I, can, I could have just made this a string. All right, so that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys like this video, please give me a like. If you want more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. I'm Rasim from RossmoreTech.com, and thanks for watching.